Hey guys, it's Jessica and today we are going to do kind of a try on drugstore haul. And I don't know why I said kind of because that's exactly what it is. Because I'm accepting a lot less PR, I have kind of the freedom to really go to the drugstore or go online and really find what I want to try. So everything I'm trying out I bought with my own money. I am so excited to try these. There are some brand spanking new products I've not heard anyone talk about yet that I cannot wait. I have them all on my face today. I'll have links and prices below. But I did want to let you know that this video is sponsored by ShopTagger. I have worked with them so many times. This is a tool online that I use almost every single day and I know a lot of you guys use and I get a lot of questions about. So what ShopTagger is, is a tool you can use online to save different items that you're planning on purchasing or wanting to purchase someday. It will let you know when those items go on sale or when they go back in stock if they're out of stock. So the way to use it is you download the browser button and once you've done that, whenever you are on a page with the product that you're wanting to save, all you have to do is click the Shop Tagger button in the top right corner and it will save it to your Shop Tagger account and then you'll get notified via email when that item either goes back in stock or it goes on sale. And you can also get push notifications on your phone if you download the Shop Tagger mobile app. Another piece of it that I love is that you can organize these products into lists. So for me, I like to keep it simple. I have my old favorites list and then I have my wish list. And so for example, on my old faves list, that's where I keep products that I repurchase often. And so I'm waiting for them to go on sale to kind of stock up. My favorite hairspray, the Bedhead Masterpiece hairspray, a few weeks ago, it was on sale for literally 50% off at Ulta. So I got an email from Shop Tagger that morning that said that that hairspray was on sale. I clicked through and went to Ulta and ended up buying a couple of them on sale. So it saved me a lot of money on something that I was eventually going to buy anyways. And another new feature they just recently added is that it will now show you coupon codes at checkout. So if you're interested in trying Shop Tagger out, I will have a link below with all of the information you need to know. It's completely free and it is totally, totally a lifesaver and a money saver, really. Thank you so much, Shop Tagger, for supporting my channel and sponsoring this video. Now, let's get into trying a bunch of new drugstore makeup. Ah! So we have a handful of goodies here to try. I am really excited. The first thing, I've already um, moisturized and put SPF on, but the first product is new from CoverGirl and it is their moisturizing skin primer. And when I was at the store and I saw this, I was like, ooh, because I found that there are, pr there are a lot of really good moisturizing primers at the drugstore. And actually in this CoverGirl line, they already had a primer, their illuminating primer I really, really liked. So I was excited to try this and it definitely feels um, a little, it's got a slight just kind of herbal smell, if that makes sense. It doesn't smell bad. It smells like a, other primers I've tried. It's not like, but it's definitely a smell that's noticeable. But it doesn't feel tacky, but it definitely, definitely feels moisturizing. And I would say the texture of it is kind of like a hybrid gel cream because it's not thick like a moisturizer, but it's definitely not completely a gel. This is probably not one of those primers that's going to really increase the longevity of your makeup, but I think it's really gonna help with the way your makeup looks and the way it sits on top of your skin because it is super moisturizing. So this would be ideal if you're using a super like mattifying foundation. So this next product I am dying to try is one that you guys have been asking me to try on Instagram. It's the Maybelline Dream Urban Cover Full Coverage sunscreen. Oh, none of that makes any sense to me. I'm like, wait, what? So it's SPF of 50 broad spectrum. It says it's got antioxidants in it. It's supposed to protect against pollution. So it's got a lot of claims, but it also says it's full coverage. So I'm so curious as to how this will apply. Let me grab a sponge and wet it because I think this is not, if it's supposed to be full coverage, let me swatch it. I don't think this is going to be ideal for me to apply with my fingers. So I've got my beloved L'Oreal, like pink sponge that they sell. It's my favorite sponge. So I have the shade 102 Fair Porcelain. So I think it's gonna be a little yellow for me. <laughs> but let's just see how it blends in and look at the finish. Whoa, it blends in really fast. Now this is an SPF of 50, but I, I wouldn't trust this to be your only sunscreen because you'd have to put a really thick layer on. That's covering pretty well though for a thinner layer. Obviously it's too light for me as things always are. I always go too dark or too light. It is so hard to hit it right on the nose, especially when you're buying at the drugstore. You guys know at a regular drugstore, at least the ones near me, you can't swatch things. You can't do anything like that. So you really are just kind of guessing. It definitely had a little bit of coverage. I wouldn't call that full coverage. Obviously you can still see a little bit of the redness on my cheek, things like that. But that was a very thin layer I put on. So let's see if you can build it up a little bit. If you like using brushes, 
brushes are going to shear it out a lot less. And if it'll and if it will make you happy, I will blend this in with a brush. One thing in its favor for some of you is I don't feel like this is an oily or dewy foundation at all, which a lot of times for things that are high in sunscreen, that's hard to find. So the fact that this is SPF of 50 and it's really not a dewy foundation, I really think that what you're seeing is the primer underneath. So oily girls, you might like this, especially if you're already gonna pair it with maybe a more mattifying or long wearing primer underneath. I like the finish of it. I can't, I can't complain. I think if you have drier skin like I do or normal skin, a hydrating primer underneath is probably a good idea because looking at where I swatched it on my hand with no primer underneath, it's definitely more of a matte finish. But I definitely think it's buildable. It actually applied really well with the brush. So I guess at the end of the day, it's different than I expected this to be. I expect it to be a BB cream with um, maybe a little bit more of a dewy finish lighter coverage, but in the end, it's a fuller coverage, a little bit more matte, not completely matte, but a little bit more on the matte side, almost foundation, but it's really lightweight. Go figure, but I'm enjoying it so far. If you are normally like my skin tone, like we usually match, will you tell me what shade you have in this, what shade works for you? So next up is this brand spanking new CoverGirl Concealer. It's their True Blend Undercover Concealer. I got it in the shade Light Nude. I kind of shaded up quite a bit, just because the ones in the store that I was looking at, I'm like, I don't want my under eyes to be super bright, I want it to be closer to my skin tone, so I really did go up quite a bit, but it's one of those, it's CoverGirl's version of the giant doe foot applicator type of concealer, um, where it's usually fuller, my assumption is that it's gonna be fuller coverage, but I guess we'll see. So I'm gonna start with, yeah, I like this color a little bit more. So we're gonna start with what I think is a little bit, I guess we'll just see. That blended in so fast. Holy moly. I'll link the brush I'm using if you're curious. Guys, that blended in so freaking fast. That color was a nice match too. I, first impressions, but I'm already liking this more than the L'Oreal Full Wear, is that what it's called? Concealer that I really do like, but it's not like my holy grail, like only one I'll ever use. This one blended quicker. Now we're gonna see how it wears because that one wears pretty darn well throughout the day, the L'Oreal one. But I mean, I am astounded at how fast and how well, like it's very seamless once it blends in. And I do have some stuff to cover there and I feel like it covered it oh, really well. It gets into your fine lines a bit, but every concealer I've ever used does that if you have fine lines like I do. But it's not a super matte finish, but it's also not a super like dewy finish like the Tarte, like, creaseless concealer that they have. I actually really like, but it is a almost like comically dewy concealer. It's bizarre. I like it, but a lot of times I still have to set it a little bit just because it's too much even for me, but that sits really nicely. I'm going to quickly do my brows and be right back. I'll be using the LA Girl Shady Slim Brow Pencil. There go my contacts drying out again. My optometrist told me that I have really low like levels in my tear ducts. She's like, do you cry a lot? I'm like, no. <laughs> I'm, and then I'm like, do I? I'm like, no, I really don't. I'm emotional, but not that. I mean, I think I cry truly maybe once a month and it's usually because I'm watching like This Is Us or A Million Little Things or A Handmaid's Tale. I cried reading Outlander the other day and I can't explain that. And it was not a part that you should be crying at, but I did anyway. All right, so we are eye primered, we are browed. You're gonna try some eyeshadow products. So I've already played with this line of eyeshadows, so that is not new to me. I really do like it. These are not shadows that, hmm, how do I explain them? They're really creamy, they're beautiful, but they're not shadows that are like as punchy and wild as like you might see in an Urban Decay palette or something like that. But they're beautiful in their own way and what I like about them is because of that, they're really easy to work with for every day. So if you're like me, I'm not a makeup artist, I just love makeup, but more often than not, I don't have a lot of time when I'm getting ready unless I'm sitting down and filming with all of you lovely people. So with that in the back of my own mind, I just think shadows like this are so awesome to have. So I bought two of them and I guess I should tell you what line it is. It's the L'Oreal. Color Riche eyeshadow line, and I picked up Pan au Chocolat, assuming I said that even close to right, which is this really pretty taupe shade, 
And then I also got Sunset Sen, and it's more of a kind of gold, but like burnt gold shade. So very different looks, um, much more cool tone, much warmer tone, but I don't like to use these together, I like to use them on their own. So I kind of think I'm gonna go with the cool tone one today, the, um, the chocolate one, because I'm wearing like gray, I don't know, I'm not really feeling a warm shadow. But what I like to do with these, very, very simple, is get some on my finger and tap it onto my eyelid. These I do think work best with the primer because they really do kind of need something to stick to. But I'm actually gonna get a little bit on a fluffier brush and kind of use that to blend that together and a little bit into the crease. And that's pretty much all I do. Someone told me the other day, I read a comment the other day that said, Jessica, you only wear brown eyeshadow. Why does anyone watch your videos? I'm, and I literally wanted to respond, I have no idea. I love you guys and thank you for watching my videos, but I always laugh, I'm like, that's another reason I kind of wanted to do more lifestyle on my channel because I'm not a makeup artist. There are so many makeup artists and people that are way more talented than me. I've never claimed to be a makeup artist. I'm not planning to be a makeup artist. I just love makeup and I know what I like in makeup and that's why I started my channel in the first place, but I guess to sum it all up, what I'm trying to say is, I don't know that I could just do makeup videos for the rest of my life because I don't feel like I completely fit in in every way. And that's why I like weaving in other little lifestyle things. Like in my June favorites, I talked about a bunch of makeup I'm loving, but I'm also trying to talk about other things in my life I'm loving, like fashion things and books and songs and stuff like that. So you see what I mean by, I just piled tons of it on and it didn't really matter. Like you can't put too much on and some people would maybe fault these for that but I actually kind of like it. So that's something to just keep in mind. If you're like me, man, you can't go wrong. And I just feel like that's a really pretty wash of color. I think what I'm liking about this concealer to go back to the CoverGirl concealer is it feels very, um, it reminds me of the Bendy Avocado concealer in a way from First Aid Beauty, but I can't, I don't know that I don't have, I got rid of it because I never found a shade that worked for me, but that one is really, it just like kind of bends with your skin and I feel like this one does too. It's almost like a flexible concealer and I'm really enjoying that. So for liner, I haven't bought a new, is this true? I feel like I haven't bought a new pencil liner from the drugstore or anywhere for that matter in a long time. I've really been loving the Hourglass 1.5 millimeter, but I wanted to just try something different. So this is from Maybelline. It's their Lasting Drama Matte Automatic Pencil. So. I have a feeling the one thing that will drive me crazy about pencils like this that are attractable is once they're dulled out, they're just a really thick line. So you have to be really careful. Whereas obviously I typically like a thin line unless I'm doing like a little wing, which I might do today depending on how this works. So it actually says that it's waterproof. Let's see. So I like that the packaging of the actual pencil is matte. Wow, that is really creamy and really, really black. So I'm just gonna kinda try to tight line a bit. So it's super black, it's super creamy, it glides on incredibly fast. My next question with pencils like this, I like to take a like liner brush and just smudge it so there's nothing on this. I like to see if I can spread it out. Yeah. If you've got a really creamy liner like this one and you take a pencil like this, it's almost as though you have the control of doing like a gel liner where you have like, you know, obviously literally this, but you can spread it really easily and even create kind of a smudgy wing, which I've really been into just kind of the blown out, kind of diffused liner look. So you can already see how thick that liner is now that it's dulled down so that Again, if you're into skinny liner pencils like me, then you might not like it. Um, I know that Smashbox sells, and maybe there's a drugstore version of it too, let me know if you know of one. Smashbox sells their always sharp liners where literally there's like a sharpener that will shape that in the cap. So it's really, really cool. I wanna say that Annabelle does that as well, which you can get, I know, in Canada. So I... I'm really excited to try this. It is the CoverGirl Exhibitionist Mascara. Mascara. I got a lot of flack from you guys because when I was going through my PR stash and decluttering a bunch of it, I was like, I'm not gonna try that and I got rid of it. And so many of you guys were like, no, Jessica, the CoverGirl Exhibitionist is so good, you'd love it. I'm like, crap. So I'd already gotten rid of it, I'd already donated it. So 
I bought it again. It's gonna be hard to beat out the Essence Lash Extension Mascara I've been loving lately. That one has the craziest hold. However, it is more difficult to get off at the end of the night. So that is one thing that's driving me crazy about it, but it's so pretty. This is the exact same wand as the L'Oreal Lash Paradise, which I love. So we're gonna see. I'm enjoying it. You guys, it feels just like the Lash Paradise. It's super soft and you feel like your lashes feel like feathers. Do you know what I'm saying? Like it's a very feathery look that's incredibly soft. This is the second layer I've put on. Definitely, I wouldn't say it's like crazy volumizing, crazy curling, but it's just like I said, it gives your lashes that really fluffy look, which I love. So to show you these up close, they're very, like I said, just really fluffy and I like it. I really do. This is something that I would pick up at the drugstore. Nope, again, no problem. All right, we need to put some like bronzer and stuff on my face because I feel like I, I just need to match a little bit more. So this might not work because <laughs> once I swatched it, I was like, I don't think that's quite what I'm wanting it to be. This is the Burt's Bees All Aglow Bronze Splash Bronzer Stick. It's a cream stick. It has this like moisturizing kind of core in the middle but it really does come across as more like just orange and shimmery. I'm gonna apply it the way I normally apply. I don't know you guys. Maybe it's gonna be like perfect for you if you're even fairer than me. Maybe, maybe I'm speaking too soon. I can't tell if this is residue from yesterday's bronzer on this brush. Don't judge me, yeah, I know, I know. I can hear you from here. So it could just be residue. I'm a terrible YouTuber. <laughs> I think it's just gonna be a little bit too light for you for pretty much everyone. I mean, you'd have to be the fairest of fair. I'm working on my drugstore bronzer and blush and highlight like cream video comparing a couple different ones. And this of course will be a part of it as I play with it a little bit more. So I actually have the Burt's Bees blush stick as well. Um, but I also have the Flower Beauty Blush Balm in the shade, because I'm almost out of Pinched, my favorite one ever. And this one's in the shade, I wanna say bubbly. So whereas Pinched is more of like a light neutral peach, this one's more of a light pink. So the way I apply these, I, I do it a couple different ways. You squeeze the kind of creamy liquid there. Ooh, is this gonna be too cool toned? Maybe. So I've done it a couple different ways. Today I'm just gonna get a little bit on my sponge like that and tap it onto my cheeks, as so. It's just definitely a pink look, so just know that going in if you're gonna get bubbly. I still feel like I look like a lovely lady from uh, Les Miserables. <laughs> Not that that's a bad thing, I'm just saying. I feel like when I've seen that scene played out, they're wearing like way too much rouge, that was the thing. So kind of blended a little bit. I actually do think that looks nice. It's just a really pretty like springy pink, you know? Ooh, so for lips, I'm gonna use, this is a different shade in the L'Oreal Colory Shine line. <laughs> it's the shade Sparkling Rose. I had had the Sparkling Peach one, and then I also had whatever the nude one was, and neither one of them are quite the right color for me, so I ended up getting rid of them over time. But this one, let's just see. Yeah, they're just such a comfortable formula. They're semi-sheer, but they definitely have some color. They're so easy to put on, they're comfortable to wear. You don't, they don't feel sticky, they don't feel thick, they don't feel drying. They're really just a nice everyday lip color and I like this color. It's very much a Jessica color. Usually I go maybe a slight bit deeper just because my lips are naturally pigmented, but I like this and you know what? This works better than the other two shades did on me. So if you've been if you really like this formula, but you really haven't found a shade, it might be worth trying out. It's Sparkling Rose or it's number 908. And just really quickly before I forget, I'm gonna throw a highlighter on. This is the J-Cat Pearl Luminizer Powder. I learned about this in my little collab video I did with Taylor or the Taylor here on YouTube. And I was so flipping excited. I feel like I'm like, still have like residual fangirl-itis. <laughs> but this is, this was my favorite product from that. It's such a pretty luminous, but like not over the top highlighter and it's a loose powder that thing is going to last forever and it's really really inexpensive and Ulta sells it online so we're going to do a check-in today at the very end of the day to see how all of this wore I'm especially curious about the foundation and the concealer but also just like how the mascara holds the curl if this eyeshadow creases so I'll see you in a little while
It's about 11 p.m. I'm just about to wash my face and I wanted to check in with you guys just so you can kind of see how the makeup is wearing as I try to do all the time. I, st I like the concealer. The concealer really didn't budge and I didn't set it. I think obviously if you have problems with concealer needing to be set, set it. I mean, it's gonna be like a lot of other concealers for you. I don't like the way this foundation is sitting on top of my skin. It's really not flattering. On my chin, I always wear it off on my chin because I'm an old wise man. You can kind of see where it's just kind of gathering in certain areas, it's just not flattering. But what's funny is it looks really good on camera. And I had a lot of compliments from you guys on, um, like I was on my Instagram stories, and I had a lot of people asking like, wow, what's on your face? It looks really good. So it's one of those things that, you know, maybe I'll wear filming because I do think it looks nice, but in person, I don't like it. I don't know if I need to blame the primer or the foundation for this, so I'll have to try them separately and get back to you guys. The eyeshadow didn't like crease or anything crazy. I feel like it looks the same as when I put it on, you know. The liner, the like kind of outer corner stayed pretty well. Again, keep in mind that I smudged it so it's not gonna be as dark and black because it wasn't even once I'd smudged it out initially. Um, the mascara held a curl really well. Just ignore my new little friend there. No like weird black smudgy, so I'm definitely gonna be using that again. The lip product I like, but again, I already knew I liked that lip the L'Oreal lip product. I do think you can still see the blush pretty well, but I, again, I love the blush bombs and I think it'd look even better over a foundation that sits a little bit better on my skin. So out of all the products I tried, I think my two favorites were that CoverGirl mascara, I'm definitely gonna be using again, and that concealer. I'm really excited about those. So I hope this video was fun and helpful for you guys. I love trying out just a couple of beauty products here on my channel and I'm always excited when I find products at the drugstore that are so good and that they're not just good for the price, but they're genuinely just good regardless of the price. Does that make sense? So I hope that you'll subscribe to catch more of my beauty and lifestyle videos and come chat with me on my social media. It is jambeauty89 absolutely everywhere. I'm most active on Instagram and Twitter for sure. And other than that, I'll catch you guys in my next video. Bye.